Hello again, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. Welcome back and thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, I want to tackle something that we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, we were at a local stream uh, and I said it would have been useful to do some time blending. So today's video is going to be about how to do that uh, and I'm going to look at a few examples. We're going to get into Lightroom and Photoshop to look at the mechanics of the processing and we're also going to show in the field how to go about it in the field. So something I've spoken a lot about in the past is the concept of aesthetics and how time affects aesthetics. If anything is moving, then the way it's moving through the frame, um, we either like it that way or we don't like it that way. Think about clouds. You can have big clouds. If you do a long exposure, they get all streaky and elongated. Sometimes those clouds look good, frozen in time. Other times they look good, all strung out and streaky. It depends on the type of clouds and it depends on the type of direction. When we have flowing water, the key uh, components of which shutter speed is most appropriate for it is how close it is to the camera and how fast it's moving. So things that are further away move less in a short period of time than things close to the camera. So in these type of scenes where we've got small scenes and we've got uh, water quite close to the front of the lens using 24 mil, things like that, we have a situation where the water that's at the front moves further in a given period of time than the water that's maybe uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 feet behind that. So let's jump into Lightroom first of all and have a look at this first example. Now, this is a series of six photographs and this is just a little local stream, very anonymous, not too far from home. And you can see I've got the information panel showing there by hitting the I key. Now, this water was moving quite quickly. It was in a lot of shade. It was in a wooded type of environment, as you can see from this film. And the first shutter speed I did was a sixth of a second. And we can see quite a lot of texture in the water there. I also have my case circular polarizer on here, but I don't have any ND filters. This is just shady conditions. So the first shot's a sixth of a second. The second shot is a third of a second. So that's twice as slow as it were. And you can see there's a very, very different look between those two shots. A sixth of a second, we still have quite a lot of texture in the foreground and the third of a second things are getting, I would say the third of a second is more aesthetically pleasing for my personal preference. We then move up to 0.6 of a second. So I'm moving up in stop increments here um, and we're starting to lose some of the texture in the foreground but the background suddenly seems like it looks kind of cool. Then we get up to 1.3 seconds and the foreground is getting mushy. We're losing texture. And then finally, I have a 2.5 second exposure here and a five second exposure. And you can see by the time we get to 2.5 and five seconds, things are getting really diffused. Now, the key learning point from this exercise is to say that the composition is exactly the same, but the feel is different. And the only thing that's changing frame to frame to frame is the shutter speed. Now, the key learning point from this is that we have to be conscious of our preference because there isn't a shutter speed that we can default to because every scene is different you'll see when we get to the next couple of scenes that the shutter speeds are different again because the circumstances are different. The compositions are different. The water's moving at a different pace. It's further away or closer. So the key important thing in this part is to appreciate that we have to make a preference. We have to determine which one we like the most. Once we've done that, uh, I tend to think in this example, the faster shutter speeds have got too much detail in them. So the sixth, the third is okay for the foreground. The 0.6 is good. 
I like the 1.3 for the back. So I think I'm going to take these two and quickly put these together. So you can see here we have uh, an exposure for uh, 0.6 of a second and a third of a second. So I'll use the third of a second for the front and I'm going to use the 0.6 for the back. Um, or I think I've focus stacked this as well. I think the 2.5 exposure is sharp for the back so right we'll do that so i want to do a 2.5 exposure for the back and i'm going to use this um this exposure here which i think is the 0.6 yeah so i'll use the 0.6 for the front and the 2.5 second exposure for the back because the 2.5 second exposure is focused for the back so i'm going to open these in the develop module uh, and with auto sync uh, selected that means that what I do to one will automatically be done to the other and then of course I'll have to take them into Photoshop and blend them together. So I'll turn off the eye and I can turn off that left side panel and here we go. So I'm going to start by making some generic uh, adjustments and I'm not thinking necessarily about how the final image is going to look but I am just deciding on my shadows and highlights and the overall color palette of the image. So I want to make sure that's all okay. And I think I'm just gonna stick it with that for now. If I go to the next shot, we have the same adjustments have been carried forward. So both of them are now synchronized in terms of those adjustments. I'm going to right click on this image and go edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. While that's opening in Photoshop, what we have here is the same process as if we were going to blend exposures in terms of focus stacking. So we need to create um, a Photoshop document that has two layers in it um, and then we're going to blend those together, but I'm going to do it manually. So here we are in Photoshop and I have an image with two layers on it. And the faster shutter speed at the top is the front. And this one is the back. I always find it really useful to label uh, layers. I think it's really important and I do tend to align those layers so that the front is at the bottom and the back is at the back. This is a really simple process. So I'm going to highlight both of those layers and I'm going to go into edit auto align layers. Now this is exactly the same as if you were going to focus stack because what we need to do is we have two different focus points and the image moves when you move your focus point. So by auto aligning them, we're basically saying Photoshop does a really good job of just taking the rocks and uh, making them the same place. The water is not an issue. The water is just really easy, but the rocks are the things that we need to make sure. Now, if I turn off the back image and zoom right in here, and then zoom right in you can see just a bit of out of focus stuff in these rocks right at the back of the frame so the back image is serving two purposes it is um changing the shutter speed for the back so the back has a 2.5 second shutter speed so if we see that that just the water is very blurred and very abstract especially through the center section and as you can see there's a lot more detail in here than there is in this longer exposure. But I kind of like that because I want the focus to be at the front. But what we definitely need to do is use the back exposure for the focus. And I will blend these, I will focus stack these manually, and then I'm gonna paint the water in the way I want it to go. So I'll zoom back out for the moment. 
And with both, pardon me, with both the layers highlighted again, I'm going to do Command J on a Mac to copy those two layers or Command uh, Control J uh, on a PC. So Command J or Control J gives me backup uh, copies of both, which I am now going to put in a group and hide that group. So that means I've got the original photographs without blending them together. And that's a very, very important step. I'm now going to take the other two photographs. So the back and the front, I will then uh, select both of those and I'll do a regular focus stack where I'll go auto blend layers and click OK. And this will focus stack them. The problem is it doesn't know which water to use. So I'm focus stacking but the water uh, is going to see it's not taking um, it's not taking all the water from the front or all the water from the back. It's 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 created some kind of bizarre combo uh, where it's taking some of the water from one bit and some of the water from the other bit. So now I've got this black uh, this layer which is a focus stacked layer. So I'm just going to call this uh, focus stacked. So I've now got a focus stacked layer um, and I've now also got my group on top, which isn't focus stacked. So this is the focus stacked image. This is what we're seeing. We're not seeing either of these two images on the top. If I click the front image, you can see that the water is different from the focus stacked version because the focus stacked version is creating a kind of composite of the water and I want all of the water from this foreground image but obviously I don't want all of the other stuff. So what I'll do is I'm going to stick a black mask on this and I create a black mask by hitting the mask button but holding down the alt key simultaneously and that hides everything in there. I then use a white brush and I used my square keys and I can use a pretty uh, high opacity here. I can use that now to paint in the water from the foreground right up into there and up into there. Now, if I turn on the back, we can see that the water from the back is actually also different from what we've created. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, hit down the Alt key and press the mask button. And then with a white brush, I'm just going to paint in the water from the back and especially into here using my plus and minus uh, my square bracket key to make the brush larger or smaller. And this is the process that we do. It's a little bit clunky. You've got to, th you've got to really think about the technical side of things, uh, but I will, I'm going to flatten this. I'm not a big fan of keeping layers and do Command S, which will take it back into Photoshop. Uh, sorry, back into Lightroom. And now I have an image that's got uh, it's been focus stacked. So we've got the back is sharp, the front is sharp. So if I zoom right into here, all of these rocks are sharp in the background. The All of the rocks are sharp in the middle and the foreground. I've got water in the foreground that was from a 0.6 second exposure. And I have water in the back, which is from a 2.5 second exposure. And what it's done is it's given me the best of everything. It's given me the best of both worlds. I get the texture and the detail in the foreground, which helps to engage. And I've got a kind of dreaminess and an atmospheric feel to the back, which helps it recede. All of these things are things I talk about an awful lot is using texture, detail, atmosphere, contrast, luminosity to build a picture of depth, three dimensionality and emotional differences between the frame. If we look at the second example here, we have three very straightforward images. Now this is the original scene that I made uh, a couple of weeks ago in the flowing water video. And I said, oh, I wish I'd done some time blending. This is a good example of where an image could have been quite nice if I'd time blended it. 
had a faster shutter speed for the foreground and a longer shutter speed for the back. And what that does is it gives me a bit more texture in the foreground water. Uh, things might have got away from me in this one. Now this, uh, the first image here is a quarter of a second. The second image is 0.5 of a second. And the final image is one second. And there are bits of the frame where each is uh, aesthetically better. So I like the quarter of a second for the very front water. I like the 0.5 of a second for the middle. And I like the one second for uh, this, this bit and through into the back. So we're going to end up with three different water. And so this is an extension of where we were before. I'm also going to do a little bit of cropping because I don't quite like the full frame here. It feels a little unbalanced for me. So let's hit the G, the G key to take me back into my grid view. I'm going to select all of these images and then double click on this and hit the D key and that opens it in the develop module. I'll hit the I key to get rid of the information up there. Now, again, auto sync is on. I'm going to be quite aggressive, I think, with the processing of this one because I want it to have a really moody and energetic feel. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. I think I want it to be on the warmer side than the cooler side. I'm also going to crop this one because for some reason I wasn't totally happy with the composition. So I'm going to take out the top of that waterfall, pull everything down. So that top is now just a little bit more abstract. It's not quite as literal as it once was. Um, I will blend these together, then I'll bring it back into Lightroom and finish the processing. So we now have three images that have been um, altered, uh, slightly processed, and th that's auto-synchronized right through them. Go back into the G key, and I'm now going to go and do exactly the same process that I did before, which is edit in Photoshop but you edit in layers. We have to have three layers, otherwise it's a waste of time. Um, I can close the other example. So now we have, this is also focus stacked because I needed to make sure that the water, uh, sorry, the rocks in the very foreground, the, the, the camera was quite close to the front of this scene and uh, it zoomed in a fair bit. It's not like 24 mil or something. So I want to make sure that it's all sharp, but you can see how messy and stuff that middle section of water is. So I believe that this is the very front This is then the middle. And back. Now, the middle and back are actually focused in the same point, uh, but I will just line them up in, in terms of that. Um, yeah, I definitely prefer that water for that bit of the frame. So we're going to repeat that process. I'm going to collect, select three layers, edit, auto align. And this is the first stage of the focus stacking. This is how we pull the three images together so that the rocks all line up. We're not going to line up the water because it's all different. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did last time. I'm going to hit Command J, which creates backup copies of those. And I'm going to stick those in the group and unselect that group. I'm now going to reselect the three images and I'm going to go auto blend layers. And this is going to focus stack and pull together um, the three different images so everything's lined up and it should be, all the rocks should be sharp from front through to the back. But again, we're going to have to manually paint in the water. Now the focus stack has done a really funky job. The front is kind of cool. The middle has used also the, the foreground exposure. Uh, so I want to change this middle section. So I'm going to turn on my layers again. And you can see that it's the background 
back copy that I want to certainly paint in that water from. But I don't want to mess up with the front. So I need to do exactly the same as I did before. Hit the Alt key and press the mask button, which hides everything. And then with a white brush and a reasonably big white brush, I can come in and start painting in the water. And as you can see, as soon as you start painting in that water, it's blurring some of that foreground, some of that background stuff. This water is fine. I'll just check it. Yeah, see, the, the, the Photoshop doesn't have your aesthetic judgment. It's not capable of making creative choices. So for us to get the aesthetics that we want, we have to be able to, um, to paint them in ourselves. If I turn off the middle layer now, yeah, turning that on doesn't help. Uh, actually, yeah, that middle layer doesn't help. So we can get rid of that. We can actually just throw that in the bin. And then this is our, uh, photo, this is our blend. And I think I'm happier with that on for the very, very foreground rocks. You can see it's a bit messy in here. It's, it's, taken some exp it's taken some water from one of the exposures and some of the water from one of the other exposures and it's blending them together and it's looking a bit odd. So I'm gonna turn that layer back on and do what I did before. Alt click to make a black mask and then with a white brush, I'm gonna come in here and make the brush bigger. And I'm just going to paint that water in exactly where I want it. And that way you can see now we've got all this energy in the foreground with the shorter shutter speed. That's created that kind of bubbling uh, lines and flow that make it quite engaging. And then the middle and the back are from different exposures and we've, it's allowed to create a little bit more of a dreamy feel the further back into the frame we go. So I will f hit flatten, command S, come back into Photoshop, and this is the final composite. And I'll finish this off quite quickly to, um, to basically see what we can do to make it look as good as we can in the short period of time that we have available. So I'm gonna give a bit of texture here to this foreground rock and a bit of clarity. And again, this is just my method of increasing the engagement in the front. We want the front to feel close. And the best way to do that is to add texture and detail. I'll boost my whites a little bit and I wanna make it feel a little bit warmer too. There is a lovely warmth in those rocks and I'm just going to enhance that a little bit with some uh, temperature and tint and also a little bit of saturation and that helps to build that in. The water itself, I am going to make a little bit greener and a little bit more luminous. So I can come in here. So I'm making it kind of greeny warm and I'll also boost my saturation in there. I'm just gonna boost the exposure a little bit, but I'm gonna take off a bit of clarity, I think, just to make it feel a bit more diffused still. A bit warmer, a bit greener. You can see how quickly we can change the feel of that water. Now the back I'm kind of happy with, I would like a little bit more blueness in this section because it's very shadowy in there. And there's some actually some quite nice, cool tones in those sections. And we can make it feel kind of blue and cool in there, but without, 
and I'm going to give it a bit of clarity back there as well because that area of the frame I think we do want to bring the eye through. I'm happy with this processing than when I first did it a few weeks ago. Now I'm going to stick a vignette on this because I think we do want to I'll change that. I think we do want to kind of contain it a little bit so to pull the eye into the center of the frame there. I'm going to use a range mask to take off the brightest tones and that will make that feel as if it's uh, still quite vibrant and alive. Um, and I think I can lift my shadows a tiny touch more. It was getting just a bit too dark. And I'll lift my blacks a fraction too. And there we go. <sighs> Time blending. <laughs> time blending and focus stacking in a single photograph to allow different parts of the frame to feel emotionally the way we want them to feel. I appreciate this is somewhat complex or it can be quite complex. You've got to kind of keep tabs on where you are all the time. You've got to label as often as you can. You've got to mark your layers so you know where you are. I hope you find these videos useful. If you do, then please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we try and put out some interesting information to you once or twice a week, or well, twice a week on the Expressive Photography channel. Please head over to the Zen Haggis where we talk about philosophy and trying to make life better with passion. And please consider uh, supporting the channel either by hitting the join button or by buying one of our books. Or if you want to buy any case filters, the click on the link below and that is also going to help us out somewhat as we get a small affiliate commission from Case for supporting or well, for this, them supporting us as well. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this vlog about time blending to be useful. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers now. Bye. <laughs>